After I moved to Hong Kong, uh, I found everyone was using PowerPoint. Now I become <laughs> a addicted to it. I'm, be, I'm uh, incapable of making any speech without the assistance of a PowerPoint now. Uh, now, uh, the, the title is uh, In Search for Chinese Socialism 3.0. So if you're 3.0, you must ask whether it is 1.0 and 2.0. Um, of course, uh, from mass media and uh, also published academic work, uh, many people claim China has already become uh, capitalist. However, um, uh, I, I think um, no, today no one, there's no consensus about the basic definition what uh, socialism uh, it, it is about. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Habermas uh, uh, published an article uh, titled, uh, What Socialists Mean to Us. I'm not going to engage in that kind of a definitional uh, struggle. Um, but in any case, I want to emphasize, uh, socialism is something is always evolving. Uh, Marx himself refused to give a clear definition about what socialism is. And Mao Zedong, for instance, uh, he, he repeatedly said uh, he didn't understand what socialism is. So it's always a need to search for the new meaning and the new road, uh, road toward to the socialism. Uh, so was Deng Xiaoping. Uh, when Deng Xiaoping, uh, uh, in China embarked on the re economic reform in 1979, Deng Xiaoping told, uh, told the, the people in China, as well as to the foreign guests, uh, he didn't understand what socialism is. Uh, in any case, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, before economic reform, when the uh, Chinese Communist Party meet, uh, there's always in the political report, Zheng Zhi Bao Gao. There's never a title. But after economic reform, there's always the title. And the key words is socialism. <laughs> it's socialism. Uh, you can see it's always a socialism. So a continuous searching for some kind of a socialism has been uh, uh, going on for the last six decades. When I talk about the three uh, uh, version of socialism, uh, let me uh, uh, talk about the economic foundations here. Here, I, I, I don't use the official uh, uh, government statistics. Instead, I use the uh, medicine uh, data about uh, the GDP. So from 1950 to 19, uh, 2008, you can see China uh, has gone through three stages. Before 1978, very interestingly, before 78, China's per capita GDP is below a thousand US dollar. And between uh, 78 to 2002, that's in the time when Communist Party convened is in the 17th Party Congress, is moving from 1,000 US dollar to 4,000 US dollar. Afterwards, it, it, uh, it's uh, moved on. Um, I would say, Different stage, China had a, a tried to uh, some kind of experiment with different type of it, socialism. Socialism uh, 1.0. The background was uh, this is a, I, I call a stage of a subsistence uh, in Chinese, a uh, kui fa jie duan. Uh, per capita GDP is below one one thousand US dollar. The goal at this stage, it, when the per capita GDP was barely enough for a person to survive. The priority of socialism 1.0 uh, was to secure equal meaning of subsistence for the entire population while accumulating physical and human capital for future uh, good, growth. And then the basic institution um, in, at this stage was number one is a public ownership, but it's not state-owned economy. Uh, you can see uh, in 1978, uh, by the beginning of the economic reform, the GDP, about 56% of, percent of GDP is state-owned, 43% uh, collectively-owned, and 1% self-employed. Ge uh, Hu is already exist uh, around that time. If you count the number of the enterprise, you, you see the state-owned enterprise actually is a small, tiny minority. Most of the enterprise uh, either the collective owned enterprise or TBEs. This is at the eve of e economic reform. So there's no, po no possibility of the detailed planning for all the collective owned enterprise 
and the TV is at, at this time. Um, another important institution, of course, is the planning. But unlike Soviet Union, China uh, conduct decentralized planning rather than central planning. Even though many Chinese still insist China uh, experiences a, a, a period of central planning, but that's not the case. Mao uh, con uh, launched two massive decentralization drives, one in the 1950s and another in the late 60s and early 70s. So the system before economic reform already become extremely decentralized. Uh, I gave you an idea uh, in, in China during the uh, planned period, there's something called uh, the, the, the goods allocated through central planning. You can see in the total number of goods allocated through central planning is just about 800. It's much, much smaller than what happened in the Soviet Union. All else is called early woods or Sunday woods. And the, the goods in the second category or third category is mostly allocated through local level or at a firm level. And the third one, uh, third basic institution is what I call the, the unit based welfare. It works something like this the people got welfare as long as they belong to some kind of a unit. In the city, it's a work unit, in the countryside, it's a brigade or, or team. So if you belong to those team, you entitle a certain type of welfare. Uh, and the, the, the supporting uh, uh, pillar is you know, one is the soft budget constra constraint between central and the local budget and between the local budget and the individual units. So that is how it works at the time. It, the system, uh, of course, has a, its problem, but it also has a lot of achievement. Number one is in the GDP growth rate was a pretty uh, respectable, 6.5% uh, uh, from 1953 all the way to 1978. And the basic human security is somehow guaranteed. The food and the clothes is mostly guaranteed through rationing, liang piao, bu piao, uh, those kind of coupon. And the basic health care and the basic education was somewhat pro provided. Uh, the society become quite egalitarian. The G Gini coefficient in entire China was below uh, 0.3. And, uh, and the hard and soft infrastructure for the future development is already somewhat in the shape. Uh, we are talking about the comprehensive industrial base, uh, development of rural industries, uh, infrastructure like the transportation network, uh, reservoirs, uh, irrigated lands. In China today, there are 80,000 reservoirs. Uh, and uh, in 1978, the number is even higher. So most of the reservoirs in China built before reform rather than after reform. Um, uh, finally, of course, is a, a, a relatively high quality of labor force. Uh, this is very important for later development for point, for point three.